Okay, so welcome everyone to another episode of the Beijing's Physics Classroom. This section of the Physics Classroom is going to take us through the continuation of the thermal physics that we have begun for some time. You know, previously we have looked at determination of specific heat capacity of a liquid using the method of mixtures. The same method also took um, help us to determine the specific heat capacity of a solid. Today we are going to look at determination of specific heat capacity of a liquid using the electrical method. So determination of specific heat capacity of a liquid using the electrical method. So we are going to use the electrical method calorimeter for this particular study. Good. So let's begin. But like I always say, make sure you stay safe. Protect yourself at all time. Wear your nose mask anytime you're in public. Make sure you sanitize your hands. Um, wash your hands frequently under running water. Make sure you follow all the necessary protocols. But I'm here alone. So I will put away the nose mask and then take us through what we need to do. Thank you very much. So this is the electrical method calorimeter. Thermometer, standardized thermometer, whose lower fixed point is 10 degrees Celsius, the upper fixed point is 100 degrees Celsius. This thermometer is fixed in a cock. Now, the cock helps the thermometer to stand firm inside the calorimeter. So, inside the calorimeter, I have a stirrer. This is the stirrer. And I have a coil, a heating coil which is connected to this connecting wire inside that. When current passes through the coil, the coil heats, the coil converts electrical energy to heat energy. Then, I have the actual calorimeter. This is the calorimeter. So the calorimeter is always fitted inside this substance, which contains a lag. This is a lag. It is an insulating substance that prevent heat loss to the surrounding. That is one of the precautions you need to look. All right? Good. So, um, that is how the, the electrical method calorimeter looks like. All the apparatus that make up that calorimeter. So I have a lot of things here, you know, as, as we go through it, I will take you through all of them one by one. Good. So, let's begin with the experiment. Now to do this, the first thing we do is that we have to measure the mass of the empty calorimeter. So we put the calorimeter on the electronic balance and then we determine the mass of the empty calorimeter. So we say that let, let MC be the mass of this calorimeter. Let MC be the mass of the calorimeter. Now, having determined that, the liquid whose specific capacity we want to determine, we pour the liquid into the calorimeter, like this, up to about two thirds of it. Up to about two thirds. Not full, up to about two thirds. Then we place it on the electronic balance. So we say that, let M2 be the mass. Okay, let me call it M1. Let M1 be the mass. Okay, M2 will be better. So the, the one looks like the L. So I just want to distinguish between the two of them. So let me use M2. M2 will be the mass of calorimeter plus liquid. The liquid whose specific capacity we want to determine. Mass of calorimeter plus the liquid. So we determine the mass of the liquid inside the calorimeter. How do we do that? What we do is that the mass of the liquid. So let 
ml be the mass of the liquid. So the ml is equal to m2, that is the mass of the liquid plus the calorimeter minus mc, the mass of the calorimeter only. Good. Then that will give us the mass of the liquid inside the calorimeter. So having determined the mass of the liquid inside the calorimeter, we then mount our calorimeter into its stand and then we put the cover on it. Then we mount the thermometer on top of it, make sure the thermometer touches the liquid inside. Then we let the system stay for some time. Why do we do this? The, we are going to determine the initial temperature of the liquid and the calorimeter together. So if I measure it right now, it is possible that the temperature of the liquid is different from the temperature of the calorimeter. So when I bring them together, I have to wait for some time for the two of them to reach thermal equilibrium. So whilst they try to reach thermal equilibrium and I'll determine the initial temperature of the two of them, let me connect the circuit. Good. I'm done with the... So I'll put this one away. So I have my key. The key is opened. I have my ammeter, which I'm going to connect in series. I have a set of batteries, and I have my voltmeter. Of course, I have a bunch of connecting wires, which I'm going to connect. So let me connect them. So what I do is that I'll connect circuit like this don't worry after that I'll skip the circuit on the board so that you will be able to see what I have done so I'll connect my circuit remember that voltmeter is always connected in series sorry in parallel to a load a voltmeter it's not supposed to be connected in series because it has a very large resistance. So when we connect the voltmeter in series, it will prevent the current from flowing through the circuit, the load. So what we do is that we always connect a voltmeter in parallel to a load so that it will draw virtually no or very small current from the circuit. But the ammeter is always connected in series because the ammeter has a very small resistance. So the small resistance in the ammeter allows all the current to flow through the ammeter. That current flow through the load so that the ammeter can measure the current which is flowing through the load. Good. So before I close my circuit, before I close the circuit, so you can see I'm done connecting the circuit, but the voltmeter is not reading. The ammeter too is not reading. Why? Because I haven't closed the circuit. Why have I done this? I want to first determine the initial temperature of the liquid and the calorimeter. So by this time, the temperature of the liquid and the calorimeter are the same. So all right, let theta one, let theta one be the initial temperature of the calorimeter and liquid. So let theta 1 be the initial temperature of the calorimeter and the liquid. So I will look at the thermometer and determine the initial reading of the two of them. Then having done this, I quickly close the circuit. So once I close the circuit, my voltmeter begins to read. You can see the reading on the on the screen. My voltmeter begins to read. So
So you know the 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 value of the vote the voted keep changing because the, the system is still now getting itself fixed. After some time, the, the, the voltage will become fixed. Now you can see the voltage is fixed 0 0.73 volts. The 0 0.73 volts is fixed. So you wait until the voltage is fixed, then you determine the reading 0 0.73 volts, and then the current through the circuit that is 0 0.12 ampere. Mm -hmm. 0 0.12 ampere that is the current that is flowing through the circuit 0 0.12 ampere so i will then say that let i'm continuing with this one let i be the current through the circuit v be the voltage across the road and t represent the time taken So, see, this is the stopwatch. So you start, so let me open the circuit. I've opened the circuit so no current is flowing. The moment, sorry, I forgot my stopwatch. So I went and picked it. Thank you very much. So the moment you close the circuit, you start the stopwatch because we are going to determine the time taken for the substance to heat. So we close the circuit. You close the circuit and make sure that the system is reading. Then the moment we close the circuit, we start our stopwatch. So we start our stopwatch. This is the stopwatch which is determining the time taking to read. So I'll put this one down. Then we say that let T be the time, time taking to heat the liquid. Then what do we do? Once all the processes are working, once all the processes are working, what we do is that we then begin to stare. We begin to stare like this. So let the voltmeter be here. Hmm. Okay, so we begin to stare. We begin to stare. Why are we staring? We start to make sure there is uniform distribution of temperature in the system. There is uniform distribution of temperature in the system. Now, once you do this, check the voltage and check the current and make sure they are not fluctuating. Good. If they fluctuate, what you do is that you take the steady current and the steady voltage. Not the ones you started initially. Make sure the one which is steady in the system is the one you take. So you continue to stare, you continue to stare until the point is reached when you realize that you know the temperature of the liquid and the calorimeter has risen up to some point, some appreciable point. Then you open the circuit. The moment you open the circuit, you stop the time. The moment you open the circuit, you stop the time, and then you determine the temperature of the liquid and the calorimeter. That is going to be the final temperature of the liquid and the calorimeter. So you write the time, and we say that let theta 2 be the final temperature of liquid and calorimeter. Final temperature of the liquid and the calorimeter. Now, once you have determined everything like this, the moment you open the circuit, the experiment is done. You are done with the experiment. Remember, all the necessary things needed to be measured have now been measured. Good. So, let me do away with this circuit. Circuit, the components. Okay, 
So we look at the theory behind this experiment. What is the theory behind this experiment that we are doing? Let me clean the topic so that I can write the theory and the rest of the things here. So the theory behind this experiment we are doing is that heat produced by heater. What is the heater? You know, the calorimeter had a heating coil, had a heating, heating element inside. That is the heater. So heat produced by the heater, that heat is equal to heat gain by liquid and calorimeter. What is happening is that the heater is going to produce the heat, the liquid and the calorimeter are going to gain it. So heat produced by heater is equal to heat gained by liquid and calorimeter. So that is our theory. With this theory, we then write our formula. Remember, there was no change, change of state. So the quantity of heat we are dealing with here, or the type of heat we are dealing with here is sensible heat. So we say that from this theory, heat produced by heater, KH, that is equal to heat gain by heater, sorry, heat gain by liquid plus heat gain by calorimeter plus heat gain by calorimeter. So since we have this information already, let me rub it and then I'll continue with it here. Heat produced by the heater. This quantity of heat is sensible heat. So we say mass of, oh, hmm, sorry. The heat produced by the heater, remember, is electrical energy. In the heater or in the calorimeter, electrical energy is converted to heat energy. So the QH is going to give me VIT, you know, heat energy produced by, by electricity is given by VIT, where V is the voltage, I is the current, and T is time. VIT is equal to the mass of calorimeter. Okay, liquid first. So the mass of the liquid, specific capacity of the liquid, times the change in temperature, which is theta 2 minus theta 1. Remember, the last time we better told you that um, we subtract smaller temperature from the bigger temperature to get the change in temperature. Make sure that anytime we find change in temperature, your answer is not negative but positive. Plus, mass of calorimeter, specific capacity of calorimeter times the change in temperature. That one to theta 2 minus theta 1. Theta 2 minus theta 1. So we always subtract smaller temperature from the bigger temperature. Good. So this is the formula we get from the theory that we wrote down. Heat produced by heater is equal to heat gain by the liquid plus the heat gain by the calorimeter. What are we looking for? Specific heat capacity of a liquid. So we make this one the subject. So Cl is then equal to Vit all over. Vit, so we cut this one across the equal sign, minus mc cc into bracket theta 2 minus theta 1 all divided by ml into bracket theta 2 minus theta 1. So with this relation, we are then able to calculate for the specific heat capacity of the liquid. Because all the other parameters, we know them already. As for specific capacity of the calorimeter, we know it already. It's a silver calorimeter. So these um, equipment have their specific capacities written on them. All right? Good. So that is how we describe, we describe a simple experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of a liquid. Precautions. When you're doing this experiment, there are certain precautions you need to take note of. One of them is that one, the calorimeter must be locked. 
So you make sure you use a light calorimeter. Two, the system must be stirred to make sure there is uniform distribution of temperature. Three, um, three, the key, the key, the moment the key is closed, the, the, the stopwatch must be started. The time must be started. And the moment the key is opened, the time must be stopped. Uh, the moment the key is closed, the time must be started. And the moment the key is opened, the time must be stopped. If it delays more, you are going to encounter error. Good. That's another precaution you take note of. And then, um, make sure that all the connections that you use in the circuit are made tight. If you don't tighten the connections, you are likely to have problems. Because an untight connection will, make sure, will, will, will not produce a good flow of electricity. And that will make you have challenges. So make sure, you know, you stay gently. In the process of stirring, you stay gently. Don't stay vigorously. If you do that, some of the liquid will be splashed off. And then, okay. So basically, these are some of the precautions that are needed to be taken when performing this experiment at the laboratory. Thank you very much once again. Unfortunately, tomorrow I'm not a little bit well, but because I promise you that I will, I will give you this, I have decided to come and do it. Make sure you wear your nose mask everywhere you go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, BJ Online, and so that anytime I post a video, you'll be able to get it. The subscription is very, very important, please. Go to the bjonline.com and subscribe to the channel. So anytime I post a video, you'll be able to get it. Thank you very much for another episode of the BJ's Physics Classroom. Next time when we meet, we will look at the continuous flow apparatus. Because that apparatus is complex and I don't have it with me, what I will do is that I will do a PowerPoint presentation of it so that you will see how the system works. See you.